in Jubilee and the Azimio coalition. Mr. Speaker, I really, really want to congratulate my brother Mungatana. You've been in this house for a very long time. What you have said today has made me have extreme amount of respect for you. Let us not sacrifice this house on the expediency of the political wars that are taking place in this country. Let us protect this house because, Mr. Speaker, this house is protected for me to come and discuss anything, particularly issues of national interest. And I may not be able to speak them out there because somebody may sue me and say that I have actually destroyed the name and made allegations against them which are not true and they're all false. But this house, the privilege and the protection that I have in this house allows me to discuss anybody and anything so long as it's within the law. That is the standing orders and the constitution. Mr. Speaker, I want to beg with you. Be greater than many of us. Be greater than even yourself. Make a ruling that protects the Senate. Allow the two parties to go and fight out there but allow this house to be independent and for the house to do what it is legitimately meant Senator to Nyunga, do. I, I give Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The way forward. And in that, and I want us to make progress. Kindly, next order. Next order. Next order. Order number six, notices of motion. Senator Wame Wamatinga. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. I arise to give. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, you know, Senator, I think I the taxpayers the sent us here to talk about these I've things. I've given a lot of time to air your issues. It is. And I gave guidance on way forward what we need to do. We cannot live on one standing order from 2 p.m. There is nothing new even you are quoting. There is nothing new. Quote. Just a minute, Senator Wamatinga. Which is standing order? Standing order number two. Yes, proceed on what? Mr. Speaker, I rise on standing order number two on interpretation of the standing orders. Mr. Speaker, let us not act as if we just dropped out of school yesterday. We are guided by this standing order, Mr. Speaker. These standing orders, Mr. Speaker, define what a whip is, Mr. Speaker. And what you are being invited to, Mr. Speaker, is by the chair violating these standing orders. Standing order on interpretation says, a party whip means a senator designated by a parliamentary party as the party whip for the purpose of transacting the transaction of business in the Senate and includes the majority whip and minority party. In the interpretation, it further defines a parliamentary party. And I will read it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a parliamentary party, and I'm happy to read it here on interpretation, means a party or coalition of parties consisting of not less than 10 senators. Mr. Speaker, Seriously, if we cannot respect our standing orders, if we cannot respect our standing orders, what exactly are we doing? What example are we showing to future leaders? So what is Mr. out Speaker? of order now? Mr. Speaker, we are, I do not want to say the chair is completely out of order, but I just want to say that by violating this, Standing order. Who has violated the standing order? Mr. Speaker, the chair, unfortunately, with all due respect, is violating the standing order. You're out of order, Senator. You know, Mr. Nandam. Speaker, I have Next. indicated clearly Next that order. he's violating the standing order. Next order. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Next order. With all due respect. Oh, Amatinga, proceed. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair.
Eh, Senator Matinga, Speaker, sir, proceed. Eh, I realize to give notice of a motion enhancing highway safety and conveniency that I and Senator Mohamed Faki together felt that we should uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, let me say that this Friday I'll be laying to rest one of my nephews who I lost through a road accident at the age of 21 and therefore feel that this is very, very important to us. That aware that 67% of the road clash fatalities and injuries in the country comprise of economically and productive age groups between 15 and 64 years. And that the importance of good post-clash care reduces death and disability and the suffering of the road clash survivors creates the urgent need for an effective emergency medical care system and elements and process on our, way, on our highways. Mr. Speaker, sir, further aware that lives and properties are lost or irreparably damaged daily on the major highways in the country due to the accidents and the explosion of fuel tankers and the lack of accessible load and side amenities such as medical clinics, rescue centers, fire engines and ambulances hamper efforts to mitigate the carnage caused by accidents, rescue, lives and put out fires. Cognizant said that settling, uh, setting up safe stopping points for the road users at regular intervals with the necessary roadside amenities such as fuel stations, parking space, restaurants, telephone booths, minor repair shops, medical facilities and toilet enhances, total travel experience and lack of these points make it impractical for drivers to stop as often as they would wish, resorting to uh, driving-related fatigue, a significant contributor to the accidents on the highways. Further cognizant that, that provision of the amenities such as ambulances, fire trucks, and satellite medical clinics to provide emergency services to the road accident victims would save lives, lives lost daily on the major roads. Acknowledging that the governments across the world, such as France, and Germany have taken the task of setting up such anonymities through incorporation of the basic provision in their road and transport structure through different models of public-private partnership, resource ownership. Now, therefore, the Senate resolves that the Kenya National